Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Read. My reading week has been honestly quite bizarre. So, I started the month of April with the intention of reading the entirety of Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic by Shinobu Otaka um, for the first at least 10 days. Uh, Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic is a manga series inspired by the Thousand and One Nights in which a young wizard named Aladdin travels the world um, looking for friends and adventure. He finds one in a young man named Alibaba and a young woman named Morgiana who accompany him on his adventures. And in fighting the organization of Thamen, which is determined to destroy the world. So there are 37 volumes of Magic the Labyrinth of Magic, and my idea was, rather than talking about Magi during weekly reads, to do separate recap videos. So I would do the first 15 volumes uh, over the first work week of April, and then the next 12 volumes from 16 to 27 over the weekend, and the final 10 volumes uh, this past Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I read the first 15 volumes, or reread the first 15 volumes, because I've already read the first 20 volumes before. Um, and I loved it. I had a blast reading those first 15 volumes again. And I was sitting down last Friday evening to film the recap video when it just wasn't working. So I decided, okay, I'll come back to this. And as I was putting the first 15 volumes up, um, it struck me that I would rather read something else over the weekend. That maybe not reading all 37 volumes in one go is the best way to approach it, because normally when I have done these massive reading projects, the longer series tend to be a bit exhausting. Um, as much as I love them, it's still, maybe I could pace myself. Um, and I had the urge to read some of the books that I had, um, well, the poetry collections I had, um, set myself for um, once I finished Magic the Labyrinth of Magic. And, but the weird thing is that even as I was thinking this, I was also thinking, well, maybe I could downsize my manga collection and really dedicate this manga wall more to classics, canonical, modern, and contemporary fiction, poetry, and drama. And I have... No idea where that thought came from. I have no idea why I entertained it. But, yeah. So, let me put down Magi real quick to talk about what I read over the course of the weekend or failed to read, as the case may be. And I will come back um, later to talk about that annoying desire of mine because... It needs to be talked about either here or once I give it more thought and figure out what the hell it is, its own video. Because it just... Anyway, so I decided to start with the two German uh, poetry collections that I picked up recently. Etudes by Friedrika Mayrocker, translated by Donna Stonecipher, and Porcelain by... There's Grunbein, uh, translated by Karen Leader. Now, I think part of the impetus to read this book first was that, or is that, it is National Poetry Month. Um, the university, and the University of Chicago Press has a sale on this month for uh, more recent uh, poetry collections, um, one of which is well, two of which are more recently published work from Siegel, uh, both Mayrocker and Grunbein's work. So I started on um, Etudes, and 
didn't get on with it. Um, it's a collection of short poetic prose that some of the poems worked for me. Most of them did not. Um, I ended up having to use this as, well, the only way I could actually stay awake while I was reading the first half of the book was by walking around. Um, and I was going to power through. However, my I got a text from my sister-in-law asking to see if my mom wanted to go visit her the grandkids. And while we were at it, or while she was at it, and I'd have to come along to watch the kids while they, my brother and sister-in-law worked on her mother's tiny house. So we did that, and I kind of just bailed on it too. So there goes that. And then when I got back, I started on Porcelain by Doris Grunbein, which, again, is, it's a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure if the poem is like this short, and then there's if the glossary and the notes are meant to be sort of extra or included in the poem as well, or in the collection as well. But I just... I don't know, I just, I wasn't feeling it. And I guess maybe I was still a bit upset from earlier in the day. So I did put this one down as well. Now, Saturday, uh, Sunday was at least initially better. Um, I decided to read uh, two of the three um, Australian collections of poetry that I have picked up recently for... Um, Aussie April. I was about to say Australia Timber, but that's in September. So I started with um, Rednick, Subhuman Redneck by Les Murray. Um, I quite like this collection. There are a number of uh, poems that I thought were really good, and I really loved uh, Murray's voice in this. So I'm definitely happy I read this collection and picked it up. And I also enjoyed uh, The Jaguar by Sarah Holland Bat. Um, there's particularly, I like the poems where she's grappling with her father's decline and eventual death. Uh, but there are other fantastic poems as well. Although I'm not entirely sure if the jaguar on the cover is necessarily the more appropriate jaguar to have had on the cover. <laughs> but then again, Jack. The animal jaguars are a lot cooler than the cars. Because there's a poem in here called the jaguar, and it's actually about the car, then not the animal. But anyway. Now, these next two collections I read over that Sunday uh, were not as successful. Um, I decided to have a go at the uh, two early poetry collections by the Dickman brothers, Matthew and Michael. So I started with um, Matthew Dickman's All-American Poem, and I didn't like it. I thought it was a little too... I don't think it was quite polished enough, um, ultimately. It read a, like... Basically read like a student's work. Um... I mean, it was confessional. It really just, I don't know how to explain it, but I have a similar feeling to this collection that I did with um, The Anchorage by Mark Wonderlich, where it just, I guess maybe the poet, um, in Matthew Dickman in this case, is trying to find his poetic voice and not quite there yet. So, but I will come back to this collection eventually. And I will also come back to The End of the West by Michael Dickman. Um, which, yeah, I just, anyway. So, over the course of the work week, I went back to Magi the Labyrinth of Magic and read the next, uh, from volume 16 to Today, I'll be getting through volume 30. Um, I have to say, I've been loving it, particularly yesterday's reading 
volumes 25, 26, and 27, particularly the end of 26 and um, 27. Oh my, oh my. There are some fantastic um, characterizations of uh, two of the characters. And uh, two or three of the best fights in this series are in those volumes. And it is just, it's amazing. I just, I was blown away by the artwork, the characterization, the, the fight. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. Um, but I think, I don't know if I'm going to do the recap idea. Because I do plan on coming back to Magi again and again in the future. Um, so I don't know how I would approach that here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is once I finish Magi, um, I will on Monday do a book, bookshelf essential where I, where I talk about Magi that up with magic and it's an entire series and probably pull certain uh, volumes down to show images of um, that I particularly love um, or artwork from. So, um, so tonight I will be getting to volumes 28, 29, and 30. And then either Saturday or Sunday I will finish the series by reading volumes 31 through 37. Now, depending on if I decide to finish off Magi on Saturday or Sunday, uh, whichever day I don't, I will read the third of the three um, collections of Australian poetry that I have, um, Intimate Geography by Jennifer Maiden. And then over the course of the work week, I will read um, The Emperor and the Elephant by Sam Otwell Soulsby. So that's the plan. Now, before I sign off for uh, this week, um, I kind of want to go back to that uh, weird desire I had, which, given the lack of success I had with my weekend reading, would have killed the momentum, but it kind of didn't. So I think maybe what I should do is just indulge a little bit in buying some classics, canonical, modern, and contemporary fiction poetry and drama. Because even though... Uh, so to back up. Um, so when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I was more enthusiastic about uh, the classics and canonical and modern contemporary fiction poetry and drama. I was an English lit major and I aspired to an academic career. However, with the end of my uh, college life and me not actually pursuing an academic career, my interest in those genres faded. Um, however, since I've been aware of BookTube and have engaged with booktube periodically excuse me i get the desire to add more classics canonical modern and contemporary fiction poetry and drama to my collection particularly now that i can more easily afford it but the thing is is that while i have that desire the actual when I get around to reading what I've bought, the reading's not necessarily all that successful. So I don't, so that's the dichotomy of there's a part of me that I don't understand. I don't understand this reasoning, but really periodically wants to refocus on the canonical and modern and contemporary literary fiction and poetry and drama and what have you. Um, usually this happens either when I'm a bit down or, well, depressed or um, during book price season. So right now it's book price season or I guess the spring book type 
the spring um, book prize season with uh, the women's prizes and um, this Booker International and other prizes. And then in the fall, there will be the Booker and the National Book Award and a few others then as well. And I usually have this feeling around this time because a lot of booktubers are talking about more contemporary literary fiction and maybe I just want to join in. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of annoying. Um, so I need to really think about that and try to make a video about it at some point. So I've got a lot of videos I need to make. So anyway, so I don't know what videos I'm going to do next week. Um, cause there's some tags I would like to do. Um, there's also a lot of discussions I would like to do. Uh, the great American novel, maybe project, um, this whole book buying saga. Um, although I don't know if I should just do it separately or do it when I have a book haul, because there are two book hauls incoming, one from Barnes and Noble and one from Powell's. Um, and actually a third towards at the, well, that'll be in early May's book people. But anyway, so I'm starting to go off on tangents. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up for now and uh, check and see what that text was. So until I see you next week, thank you, BookTube. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.